welcome you to this first session of uh, this idea that has been in my mind for quite a long time. What came to my mind is playing my saxophone, uh, play a hymn, given a brief history of the writer and uh, explaining the power and the majesty of the hymn. I hope uh, some of you will like uh, this uh, idea. Um, see, let's talk about hymn. A hymn is a type of um, song, partially synonymous with a devotional song, specifically written for adoration or prayer. The word hymn derives from a Greek word called uh, hymnos, which uh, means a song of praise. In many churches, Hymns are a thing of the past. I mean, you see what is happening across churches all over Nigeria now. They have been replaced with uh, more upbeat and uh, contemporary songs. However, some of us Christians will not let go. Hymns cannot and should never be removed from uh, worship. There is a vast gulf of difference between hymns and uh, choruses that uh, the modern day Christians sing in churches. Many modern day choruses, otherwise corporates and worship are written to make singers feel good about themselves and uh, to entertain themselves. It gives them a false sense of a devotion and uh, spirituality. They are not deep in the word of God and you can hardly be repentant when singing some of these uh, choruses, you know. Some of them were songs converted from worldly songs. Their beats and rhythm were also copied from the world, which remind you of the dance steps and the disco hall. However, hymns build unity among the saints and create a community of saints. They invite the spirit into meetings and uh, our lives. They teach doctrine. Hymns often express testimony and may be a form of uh, protection, comfort, and uh, healing. Hymns are written to glorify God. Some of them were written at the depth of painful moments of the writers. Some to commemorate a harrowing experience or encounter with Jesus. Listen to me, my friend. Listen to me. In this stage where church is doing all it can to be like the world, and the world is doing everything possible to make the church look like itself, some of us will still go on our knees to God to ask for a revival in this church. The church we see today is not the church that uh, we thought that uh, uh, we should have. I want to introduce this session or what you call niche here uh, to give, you know, uh, where I will play a hymn and explain the power of the hymn and give a little background story on the writer of the hymn. Today, I will start with this uh, famous hymn, Be Glad in the Lord and Rejoice. I am sure many of you uh, uh, know this hymn, Be Glad in the Lord and Rejoice. Be glad in the Lord and Rejoice. Let me blow, let me play this song for you now so that uh, you will understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Be glad in the Lord and rejoice is one of the most popular hymns of all times. Scripted by a lady called Mary Savos, not much is really documented about this lady or about her activities as a, a Christian and hymn writer. She was an American stage and screen uh, actress. Born uh, on June 2, 1888 to Carlos A. Savos and Mary Nee Baker, in Chicago, her main career was uh, on the Broadway stage. She was an actress, appearing severally uh, on stage in Chicago, New York, and London. 
Having made a great impression as a veteran stage actress, she ventured into filmmaking in 1940 and made over 20 films before uh, 1949. Uh, she was said to have lived and taken care of her crippled grandmother for 18 years and later took care of her mother then her father until uh, the father died not much is known about the inspiration behind this song uh, be glad in the lord and rejoice but juxtaposing her life with the lyrics of uh, this uh, hymn but it could be deduced that the pains her parents and grandmother went through which saw her attending to them for a very long time could be a major uh, factor her lyrics dwell on uh, courage in pains hope in despondence and uh, confidence in the word uh, of god the hymn has a tremendous lyrical influence from uh, psalm uh, psalm 32 verse 11 which says rejoice in the lord and be glad you rejoice sing all you who are upright in heart one can be too far to believe that uh, she was actually influenced by this Psalm 32 verse 11 because of what she has gone through in her life. In the first stanza, Savo says, All ye that are upright in heart, and ye that have made him your choice, bid sadness and sorrow depart. Only those who locate their gladness in the Lord can navigate through the ocean of the pain that this world is. God has not told us that we will live a life free of challenge. All he said is that we are more than conquerors. That was her consolation when she closed her eyes in death in Los Angeles on November 20th, 1969. She was uh, age 80 as at the time she died. My friend, I speak to you. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. This is a Christian hymn that encourages believers to find joy and happiness in their relationship with God. The lyrics typically express a gratitude for God's love, salvation, and the blessings that come from a life devoted to Him. The message is one of a celebration, emphasizing the joy that comes from the deep connection with uh, God and the assurance of His presence in one's life. Overall, the message of uh, the song, Be Glad in the Lord and Rejoice, is one of joy, gratitude, and celebration of the Christian faith, encouraging believers to find happiness in their spiritual journey and to express their praise and thanksgiving to God. I believe you have gained something today from this uh, song, and I believe that the Lord will help you to be glad always. Don't forget, any time there is a kind of pain in your life, my brother, be glad in the Lord and rejoice. God be with you. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. God be with you. Bye. Oh, Nepa, too, no, no. Oh, too bad. Sorry. No, Nepa. I would have played it here. <laughs>